Vincent. So the first thing, if you learned anything this weekend that you want to take away, is that you've got to be prepared. You've got to have that plan. And the next 90 days, you need to figure out what it is that you're going to do, bring to the table to really get out there and start your business. Next slide, please. So, you know, the biggest thing we can tell you about prospecting, because of course the lifeblood of your business is new business, right? The biggest thing we can tell you about prospecting is that you have to know what kind of bait you're using in advance. How many fishermen do we have in the room? How many, have you ever been fishing? Okay, would you go trout fishing with salmon bait? Would you agree that a college athlete and a single mom have two totally different needs and they need to be prospected differently, right? So you need to spend massive amount of time checking out our tools and they keep getting, I mean today, they just added three new tools that are gonna change our businesses, right? So what tools are you using? Are you using the app? Are you using the brochure? Do you carry brochures with you? Like Tina Butler said, do you carry DNA tests everywhere you go just in case? You know, are you using the postcards, the business cards, the DNA report, our branding? Are you branding yourself? Do you know why most people in network marketing don't brand themselves? Because then in three months later, when it doesn't work, they can say, oh, I was just playing. I wasn't really doing that, right? How many of you know that that's the truth? People who brand themselves are in it and serious about it. So get some branding, put it on, put it on your car, put it everywhere, all the time, and make sure everybody knows at every second of every day that you are in it to win it. All right, so the more you fish, the more you catch. Have you ever known anybody or yourself to start something and it worked perfect the very first time you did it? It usually doesn't happen. When you start a job, when you're a new parent, right? It doesn't work out perfectly the first time. So you really need an expert fisherman needs to go out there and figure out where they're gonna, the, to their target market, and where they're gonna be able to catch the most fish. So, do you know exactly what your target market is? Because it's probably right in front of your face and you don't even know it. I'm gonna give you an example. John, how many times do you look at your phone a day? A hundred, maybe, okay. What's the third icon from the left and down? No idea, right? But you look at your phone a hundred times a day. How many of you go into the same Starbucks every day and your target market is right there? They're sitting right there, you see them every day, but you don't even recognize them because you don't know what your target market is. You gotta know, you gotta wake up every morning. I wake up every morning and I think, you know what? Today I feel like talking to chiropractors. I'm gonna run into a bunch of chiropractors today. Today I feel like talking to single moms. I hope I run into a bunch of single moms. You know what my favorite is? I hope I get prospected by a bunch of other network marketing companies. How many of you wish for that every day? I do, and I go, really? Tell me all about your product. It's so interesting. I listen to the whole spiel. And then I say, well, at what point in time do they put your name on that? And they go, what do you, what? What do you mean by that? Well, our company actually puts your name on the product because it's custom made to your own DNA. Do you not do that? Does everyone in your company take the same thing? That is weird. So, you want to go ahead? Yep. 
So, uh, the, of course, the more lines you have in the water, you know, would you rather have one line or a hundred lines? Do you think your odds are going to be better? If you have a hundred lines in the water, you're going to catch more fish, right? So, you know, some of the things you can do is not just sit at your computer. I mean, that's one way of doing it, but there's meetups you could go to. Chamber of Commerce, BNI, online groups. You can get out and do coffee meetings. I know there's people out there that that's all they do. And when you're doing this, you're gonna find one of those ways that works the best for you. But you wanna do all these things because it's not gonna be just that one thing that does it. It's a combination of all these things you see here that we do to win and bring the people to the business. So, you know, can you go back one slide? There, part of your toolbox is things that you say, right? It's great to have tools, but knowing what to say at the right moment is important. And there's a couple of key phrases that take, you really have about three seconds to capture someone's attention, right? So this strategy, you know, it might take you going and spending time in large groups of negative people. You guys think you can find some large groups of negative people to hang out with? <laughs> yeah? Okay. The minute somebody complains, do you know that within the first five minutes of talking to somebody, they're going to complain about something, right? Always. The minute it comes out of their mouth, you say this. Have you considered doing something about that? How hard is that? You can say that a hundred times a day. Have you considered doing something about that? If they say no, next. If they say yes, cha-ching, right? Right? Would, you, would it be okay if? That's the next line you want to say. Would it be okay if? I sent you a brochure. I sent you a video. I invited you to a meeting. I invited you to meet a business partner. Would you like to have coffee? Can we have, right? Would it be okay if? What can they say? Yes or no? If they say no, Next, if they say yes, to ching One more step closer to the close of that sale, right? Here's another one we like to use. And I got permission, so don't think I'm tattling. Everyone knows I can't keep a secret anyway. So we like to use this technique called most people and some people, okay? Most people at our age lack energy. Some people have found a way to have the energy of their grandkids. Would you like to know more about that? Most people hate their job and go to work and hate Mondays. They don't really hate Mondays. What they hate is their job. Some people have found a way that on Wednesdays, they don't even realize it's a Wednesday because like every day is a weekend. Okay? Most people pay their car payment every month for a car that they didn't really buy because they love it, but they bought it because they can afford it. Some people found a way to have their company pay for their car. I don't think they heard me. Most people pay for their car every month. Some people have found a company that will make the car payment for them. Right? All I can say about that is better make July a good month. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. <laughs> so, you know, are you ready with the things that you say? Are you ready for a big fish? Are you ready? If, you're, if you have sponsored somebody, you're now the person they need to rely on to do those three-way calls. Are you ready for that? Okay? I like the people that said, yeah. Right? Some of you are ready for that. Some of you are terrified that the people they enrolled might call you for a three-way call. But again, all you gotta do is have the tools in your toolbox and share them with as many people as you can and share your story more than anything else. All right, this isn't on one of the slides, but you know, it's always fun when you're going fishing when you have a partner to, to go with you. And you know, they, uh, Joe and uh, Tina were talking earlier about being a couple and doing this, and, and it's one of the true blessings about this business, this company, that you get to do it together. Um, I'd like to say, you know, we have custom design, nutrition, and I literally feel like the most blessed man because I have a custom design partner here just made just for me. But you want to go find people to go out there and fish with you because it's always more fun when you're doing that. And don't go it alone. And then because you let yourself off the hook, 
<laughs> so clever. Um, needs versus wants. This is actually an hour-long presentation that we, you know, formed into 15 minutes. We're going to see if Ron will let us do the hour-long presentation next week for everybody in the company. Because prospecting, right, is so important. Needs versus wants. Don't chase people who need our product. Go for the people who want our product. And before you think, oh, all these dumb people that don't get what we have, right? We all have some of those. Think about it this way. How many of you know that you need to go to the dentist every six months? How many of you want to do that? Right? How many of you know you need to pay taxes? How many of you want to do that? So, so before you think, oh, my prospect, not finding the right prospects. No, you're, the prospects are fine, they're normal, because they might not want what they need, right? They're normal, just like us. It's your job to create so much value around what we have that they go from needing it to wanting it. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. So the fortune is in the follow-up. I love that every speaker mentioned it. I don't know if you caught that. Almost every speaker that's come up here has mentioned the fortune is in the follow-up. Think about, these are some sales statistics. Think about this. If 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact and you quit after contact number two, what's gonna happen? John Malott's gonna come along with a video and he's gonna be that third, fourth, and fifth and he's gonna get your sale. Scoop him up. Right? Don't let that happen. We've been prospecting people since November. We're still prospecting those people and we will continue to. So you don't need to chase people, but we have so many tools that you can drip on somebody every week for a year and never run out of tools to send them. Well, one of the things that you probably get from some of your team is that you, they ran out of people to talk to. Well, with this right here, the follow-up, you never run out of people because you're constantly talking and following up with the people you talk to to begin with. And it's quite interesting that you just don't know people's situation when you initially talk to them, but three months later, something could have happened. They could have lost their job, they could have had a big disaster, or they just really got to the point where, man, they just want to do something different. And if, you, if you're the person that gave up on them on the first phone call, you know, hey, do you want to take a look at this? No. Okay. You know, and that's it. That, of course, nothing's going to happen from that, but it could be quite possibly on the seventh time that you invited them to participate that they could be one of the biggest players on your team and you just gave up on them too early. So the follow-up is the key to consistently train your team and do yourself because you just don't know the right time for who that person is. Next slide, please. So, Fishermen know when to be quiet, and this is, we all know those people that you meet somebody and they're like, hey, my name is Luke, and they throw up on them about every science and, and all this stuff that we have, which is great, but sometimes just being quiet and being a good listener will act, give you access to more customers, more nutritionists than you ever thought, imagined, just by listening. You don't even have to say a word. People, a lot of times I get on the phone with people and I just let them sell themselves on it and I, I just say, okay, yeah, that's great. Tell me more about that. And then they tell me more about how great it is and it's like they're signing themselves up. So having good listening skills is gonna bring you a lot of more customers and more part business partners when you do that. So this also means blocking out the noise of others. I mean, how many of you have people in your life that just make noise? Like, all the time, they're just making noise, and half what they're saying doesn't make sense, but you let it get in your head because they're close to you, right? Don't listen to your Uncle Joe, who did network marketing back in 1987, and now he's living in your mom's basement, and bet, but don't do that, because that doesn't work. Be careful who you listen to. Look for people that have what you want, and those are the people you listen to. Don't take advice from someone that you wouldn't trade places with, right? If you're talking to someone and they're telling you how awful network marketing is and how it doesn't work, and they're stuck in a job and their next sentence is, God, I'd give anything to get rid of my awful job, that's not who you listen to. That guy doesn't pay your bills. Don't listen to those people. You're doing this for you and your family. 
Don't listen, don't let other people squash your dreams. <laughs> so, I'll just finish this up by saying the story, uh, the difference of what one person can do and about not giving up. And in a company I was in, I won't name it, but there's this one person that I pursued and really it was because I knew he was getting into the wrong thing and I wanted to make him aware like, man, I don't think you really know the road you're going down. And I just kept in touch with him, this person, for it was about six months. And I did not give up on this person. And they, they definitely told me more than once, worse than that example of Eric Ward yesterday, you know, I will never do this. I'll have to be in a grave before I ever think about doing this. And that single person was responsible for 17,000 people on my team. And it was all because I didn't give up on him. And I didn't give up on myself either, on, on the pursuit. So don't quit one foot before the finish line. There's always a different pond to fish in. And there's always going to be that next person that's on their knees praying and begging for this opportunity. They just haven't heard from you yet. Thank you guys so much. that you guys are this fun and lively and that you give it up for each other. It doesn't matter who's in your downline, you give it up, right? 100%, you cheer these people on. Well, now we're on to the next rank, which is called Creator. And I love this one because in business, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, the word creator means everything because you just create from nothing. So creators live their lives by design rather than default. The release of ego and entitlement liberates the creator where their best work is always their next work. It's the small things that distinguish good from great. So it's with great pleasure that I get to introduce one of our three creator entities here tonight with us, a very special couple that I just, when I'm with them, I just feel like I could just follow them home and just be with them the rest of my life. They're just so friendly, so kind, so talented, such a beautiful couple. Uh, and nobody, I don't know, very many people that can tell the euphoria story of the science like Tina. So Kelly and yes. Tina. Yes. team, but the whole Euphoria team is our family. And we love you guys, and we love you guys, and we're just so grateful to work with amazing, amazing leadership and a corporate team that is like above and beyond anything I've ever experienced in this industry in a long time. I've been watching this DNA space for a long time now with some of the other people here that were in the pre, pre, pre company to this company. And I got to tell you, it was a disaster back then. I kind of expected it would be a disaster again, but from the minute Terry LaCour and Ron started talking, I was in. I was like, Kelly, it's all about DNA Customized. And he goes, oh, can't we join a company like for fishing or hunting? Or... <laughs> I said, no, no, no. It's all about DNA from now on and forever. So our journey is just starting. You know, business, especially network marketing, it's like a roller coaster up and down and all over the place, right? But the best part about a roller coaster is the anticipation of what's coming next. Yes, yes. And we're so excited to watch where this company goes over the next decades of time that we'll all be here together. Thank you. So, yeah. It was either this or beef jerky. So <laughs> obviously, we're with Euphoria. Um, so yeah, I, I just... <laughs> I, I just want to challenge everybody. 
you know, we go to events and we get excited and it is fun to see all the people that you only get to see on a little one by one screen on Facebook or a webinar. And we get to be here all together. We're united as a family. So my challenge for everybody is to make a declaration this weekend for yourself and take this not just till next week, not the week after, but really challenge yourself to ride this through the end of the year. So when we launch in 2020, that this room, the people around us, it's gonna be unrecognizable from what it is right now. And that's because of what you guys bring to the table and what we can all do together to really make a difference and I, I did make the statement to Ron, I said, there's a lot of people that are gonna get healthy because of this company. And they just haven't heard from us yet. So thank you everybody. Thanks for everybody that, that really that we're here because of, so we love you all.